All right, everyone, welcome back once again to this BeefCast presentation. I'm still your casting host, Beef, bringing you game three in this best of three series straight out of the Asus ROM. Good Invitational it happened a few weeks ago. Big shout outs to those guys for putting those replays up and allowing me and other casters who get those out there and for you guys to watch those, learn, enjoy, and be entertained. Game three here on Entombed Valley. Scores 1-1. One, one. Who's going to be moving on in this group stage? Who's going to take this series? We'll have to find out. In the top left-hand corner, showing some dominant macro play, but definitely a bit of a vulnerability to some early cheese. We do have the blue Zerg playing for Team Liquid. He is red. His opponent in the bottom right-hand corner uh, tried some mech. Then said, nah, not that again. We're not going to go towards Rhett Strength. We're going to go ahead and drop a double proxy ranks. Will he do it again? We'll have to see. We do have the EG player, Thorzane. This is actually kind of... Oh, what? Okay, so this is going to be one proxy ranks out here. And very possible that it will be another standard ranks over here. Or he could do double proxy ranks. We will see. But it's actually looking like it's going to be... 11 11 again wow thorzane saying you know what if it ain't broke don't fix it and this is a little bit different because it's uh entombed valley so he doesn't know where his opponent is this shouldn't be forced cross bonds like, at least i don't believe it's forced cross bonds and the map is much much larger than ohana that we saw the previous game on so thorzane's gonna have much further distance for his marines to traverse but his opponent also might not be suspecting it because it's Entombed Valley. This is not a common build. And right now, Rhett playing extremely greedy, going for that hatch first and then going for a 16 pool behind it. So that is a very late pool. SCV going to start scouting right now, wants to be able to identify where his opponent is. And he's going to scout wrong with this first SCV. So that one's not quite going to happen. But when he does run into an Overlord in one of these other locations, he might be able to discern where his opponent is first marine starting to make their way across the map right now and Rhett, we saw the early gas one early gas out of him last game that did get canceled because he already had marines at his front door this time the gas is going to finish so this is even a little bit worse for Rhett. he's not going to want to start mining from this gas right away unless he's able to get a baneling nest out that would be a different story but scv and marine going to make contact there with a drone so that's going to signify to Rhett that uh this is a little bit of a problem the overlord is going to spot some of these marines right here and Rhett and immediately knowing what is going on the drones are pulled out of this uh extractor for the most part leaving one in there so he definitely could be going for a baneling nest we'll see if that does go down but this is actually a, a decent amount of time for ret he's got the spine crawlers coming down because the hatchery was able to finish already but four scvs are with this group not just the two that we saw last game so one bunker going to be going down immediately not gonna have a whole lot of room for a second bunker and the spine caller does get canceled right there zerglings and drones gonna try to drive off the rest of these marines but this SCV not being targeted down. It's working on the bunker right now. The bunker is going to complete. So if these Marines are able to circle back around, which is what they're trying to do, they're going to be able to get into this completed bunker. But the drones and Zerglings doing a pretty decent job right now at getting this dealt with. Uh, two Marines are going to be able to make it into that bunker, though, and that's going to be a problem. They're going to be able to start working on this hatchery. They're going to be able to start doing some damage to Spine Crawlers, Queen whatever else comes into range although this spine crawler right here is out of range of the bunker perfect placement there so the scv is going to try to repair that up but one scv will not out repair that spine crawler and as the zerglings and the drones do make their way back once again uh this bunker is going to be dealt with although there's going to be a few losses no salvage going down right now either so the marine's going to be able to get out of there one marine actually going to die possibly no his reinforcements might be able to save him in time, and uh, the Marine does fall, but instead they're going to take three Zerglings for the trade, so not bad. If we take a look at the worker count right now, 24 on two base to uh, 18 on one base. This natural going to be going down here in just a moment, but one of these spine crawlers was actually canceled here, so uh, not a very stalwart defense for our Zerg player right now, but... Thorazang continuing to produce units, but will he have enough to go ahead and break this ramp? We'll have to see in just a moment here. Zergling speed on the way. We did see that uh, he did leave that drone in the gas there. So definitely had the money 
for the Zergling Speed. Had the gas that he needed, but now we do have a bunker coming down. This is going to be a contained bunker. So anything that comes down this ramp is going to get shredded. A bit of a miss rally there. One Marine making its way up there to die. Did serve as a pretty decent scout. A flying V of Marines going to go ahead and traverse that ramp as well. But back home, the racks have already been floated back. The command center starting to morph into an orbital command. And a triple CC coming down. This is going to be the greed after the pressure here from Thorazane. So he knows that he's maybe a little bit behind at this point. And so that's going to be what he's going to do to get back into the game. He has to take some risks to get himself out ahead. And that's exactly what's going to happen. He's going to cut some marine production. He's going to drop that third command center. He's going to get double gases, probably start very early upgrades. Something along those lines to really get himself back into the game. But over here, the contained bunker going down with some Zerglings. And uh, Queen's going to be able to take that out. The rest of these Marines do manage to get out of the bunker. And uh, three Marines going to be able to micro against all these Zerglings pretty effectively. But now that speed is finished, these Marines are done for. Another bunker over here at the third is going to prevent the uh, third going to be coming down from the Zerg. So, nice job there. If that was loaded up with Marines, that would be even more annoying. But Speedling's making their way across the, the map right now. Four racks in the front are going to be able to deal with this. So, with this four racks up and now combat shield starting, Thorazin definitely going to be looking like he's going bio in this game. No mech like we saw in game one. Uh, a couple of bunkers are going to be going down to try to prevent any Baneling aggression, and that is definitely a possibility. Thorazane knows that because there's no third down right now at this point in the game, uh, Baneling pressure definitely a real threat. And so dropping these bunkers out way behind the barracks definitely what he needs to do. It's going to require a ton of Banelings to break through these uh, barracks, but that is exactly what Rhett has. Two of the barracks immediately fall, but the bunkers do finish. Two bunkers right there. SCVs being pulled off the line, but all of the Banelings go down. Marines and SCVs are able to clean up any of the remaining Zerglings as the wall is starting to be reestablished here. Is he going to be able to get it up in time? Yeah, these Zerglings are being morphed into a second wave of Banelings. So we'll see how Vet continues to approach this. One of these SCVs is going to be going down. So this barracks right here going to be very weak when this next wave of attacks come. A little bit of uh, Mr. Micro here by these Zerglings. And there's not a whole lot left with these Zerglings. The next barracks does fall, but not going to be enough to break through the rest of these defenses. The SCV is going to continue repairing this bunker. Another rack is going to be thrown down. But Rhett simply does not have enough units at this point to deal with this. Still no third base. The third wants to go down right now, but there's a bunker. Rhett's going to be very upset when he sees that bunker there because he's going to have to bring units all the way from back home to go ahead and eliminate that threat and eliminate uh, any any hindrance to getting that third base down. More Banelings being morphed right now. A total of nine. But behind this, Thorazane has already gotten three bunkers down in beautiful spread position. Does not want to take too much damage from any Banelings. He's starting 1-1 one, one of his own. Combat shield already done. Getting that factory tech and stim. Banelings going to come up. They're going to make the connections with the bunker. If you have barracks, but not even able to eliminate one barracks. Rhett at this point just floundering. He does not get the damage done that he wants with this Baneling attack. And Rhett has to retreat at this point. There's no way that he can break through this wall. He's sacrificed too much. Thorazane has uh, reinforced that wall too effectively. There. The unit's finally going to be going home. The drone trying its best to take out this bunker. But, oh my god, little drone. You are not able to do that on your own. It will take you way too long. Attempted salvage, they're not going to happen. Small victory for Rhett. Maybe a little bit of a morale boost. But this third command center is still already doing work. Pumping out so many SCVs. 43 SCVs to 50 drones. Armory going to come down so that Thor's Inc. can continue his upgrades. Rhett definitely going to be behind here in the upgrade situation, in the econ situation. Rhett behind in pretty much everything, including supply right now. So Thorazine is in a dominant position. He's going to start to take out these destructible rocks so that he can land this orbital command over here and start to fortify this position with a few more barracks and maybe a bunker or two. <laughs> Engineering bay already down at the fourth as well. Thorazine flipping it on its head, really, from what we saw earlier when Thorazine was behind. He said, I have to take some risks. I have to get back into this game. Now he knows that Rhett is behind at this point. So Rhett's risks could be take a very early fourth, take the third and the fourth at the same time because that third is so delayed. And with the preemptive engineering bay, the 13-minute engineering bay block on the fourth.
Very standard play right there, right? Uh, Thorazane's definitely able to frustrate his opponent a little bit more. Definitely put him on tilt a little bit as Rhett definitely wanted that base. Scan going to be going down here. Does spot those Banelings on the high ground. Able to snipe down two of the Queens right there. Stimmed Marines going to be able to get off of that creep. And as soon as the, they're off that creep, they're going to be able to start focus firing down some of these Banelings. And the Banelings saying, hey, we're not here on the creep right now. We're not fast enough to really contest you. And the Marines going to re-stim once again. Very low on life right now. Just going to require one Baneling to take each one of them. But look at that split. Thorazane able to so effectively spit up each one of those Marines. He's able to take out every one of those bandings and with five marines still left he's able to put additional pressure onto this hatchery now that the zerglings have come in they're going to be able to clean up these marines eventually but the marines are actually doing pretty effective things against these zerglings one one marines against unupgraded zerglings look at that hero marine right there just making his last stand we'll call him rambo but back at home for the Terran player, continuing to macro up, continuing to drop those mules, getting as many units as he can. And the upgrades already starting siege tech, plus one vehicle weapons on the way, plus two, two on the way for his Marines. Oh, Thorazane continuing to compound his lead at this point. Over here, we did have a double drop being loaded up, but going to choose to unload for the time being as he does want to go ahead and scout out this fourth base. And there's not going to be anything in position to defend this fourth. It's going to be canceled if Thorazane does choose to focus that down, and it does. Zergling's on the other side of the map looking for a counterattack. They're able to pick off a few reinforcements, but nothing else. And GG actually comes out of Rhett right there. The Liquid player realizing just how far behind he was and says it is time to tap out. Thorazane playing a beautiful game and a beautiful series after that first game. The mech not quite working for him followed it up with two proxy 11 11 racks and uh the bio follow-up here in game three on entombed valley excellent these players both going to be moving on to more games in the group stages we'll be looking at those a little bit later this week as i continue to cast replays from the aces wrong good invitational shout out to aces for putting this together i do really appreciate them releasing the replays to allow casters like me and players like you to watch these learn from them and really uh just have fun with them in general i've been your casting host beef thank you for joining me check me out on youtube youtube.com slash beef pot pie one thank you for being here hope to catch you next time